Hey everybody, so today we're going to be talking about one of the features that made me decide to buy an ArcDroid over something like the Langmuir Systems Crossfire Table, and that is the ability to trace objects. Now, even if it's an object that we're not going to plasma cut, this gives us a way to accurately have dimensions that we can then export via a DXF file uh, and put it into Fusion 360 or the 3D modeling software of your choice and edit it, do whatever we want with it, and then we can take it to a router, we can use a 3D printer, whatever, whatever process best suits what you're trying to do. So this is a customer's pick guard for his guitar. There are no companies that make this pick guard, and he needs it modified because there's different pickups going in this guitar and nothing matches up. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a trace of this. Uh, we're going to throw it into Fusion 360, and we're going to modify it as needed, and then I'm going to cut it out on my CNC router. So this is just one of the many things that you can do with the ArcDroid, and uh, we're going to walk you through it here today. So let's get going. First thing, we're going to trace this thing up. So the first thing we have to think about here is orientation. How are we going to lay this out so it makes the most sense? If we go and trace it this way, we have this outer bevel. What I was thinking was, if you flip it upside down, you have that outer edge um, to sort of follow. So I think that that would work out better. So I'm going to square this up and trace that outline. So there is our trace. So uh, I long pressed on the save button, got my DXF file. So now I can take that into Fusion 360. Uh, I can make a cut file for uh, my CNC router and we can get this thing cut out. One thing I should throw in here is that uh, if you're gonna be tracing an outline like this and running the stylus along the edge, which is the easiest way to do this, uh, you do have to remember that because this tip is flattened off so, th so that there can be a hole there for it to fit down over the cone. Um, it's going to make your outline, the trace of it, actually is going to be off. Um, the, the very end of this is about two millimeters wide, so if you half that, um, your outline is going to be off by about a millimeter. Now, if you know this and you're designing your file, if that's critical to you, um, you could always offset or inset um, in Fusion that outer line uh, you could just offset that one millimeter inside and then you'd have uh, the exact dimension of your feature, um, this, this outside periphery. So now we're going to import our drawing, our DXF, into Fusion 360. So we're going to create a new sketch. We're going to put it here. One thing that I sometimes like to do just to make sure that my scaling is accurate is to take a dimension off the part and then just draw a line. Um, like in this case, if I measure the boat across where the pickups go. Um, that was about seven inches. So if I draw that line there uh, and then finish that sketch and then go and make another sketch, I'll have a reference point um, to know if my DXF is importing and it's to scale properly. because. Every once in a while, not so much with the ArcDroid, I haven't experienced this, but every once in a while with other DXF files, for some reason when they import, the scaling is all messed up on them. So, Okay, so we created another sketch, and we're going to 
insert DXF. Uh, trace 39. We're going to open. And we see we're set to units in millimeters because that's what we have our arc droid set to. And if we just do a rough look, we can sort of see that across there it's about 7 inches. So we know that more or less our drawing is correctly to scale, which is perfect. But we're going to deal with some of that here in a minute. Uh, so we'll click OK. And our DXF file is imported. So one thing we will note is that, you know, there's some squiggly lines and some stuff here. We don't all that want all that cut into our part. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to finish this sketch uh, we can hide our line because we don't need that. We're actually going to make another sketch right over top of this one. What we're going to do is we're going to zoom in, and I find it best to use the line tool because uh, we have the ability to make curves and things. So we're going to pick a start point here, and you may want to project um, a point. Uh, actually, maybe I'll just show doing that. So if we do project include, we can pick a point and that can be our start point. So first we're going to just select that point and we're going to make a very small line. Uh, and then if we press escape and select our line again, and this time we're going to hold down on our left mouse button, we can actually start to make a curve. Um, and because we're zoomed in, remember, this doesn't have to be exact to what's already there, because remember, we're trying to smooth out what's already there. So then when I let go, that automatically gives us a curve. Now we have another option. We can go along and do another small line. Because you can't, like, if I just hold and click this, it's going to create a short line, and then it's going to make another curve that comes out from that other line. In this case, that works out okay, because we can more or less follow the, the curve of this. Um, but the other option, if we didn't want a little line segment there, is to press Escape, uh, and then go back and select our line again, or hit L, uh, and then drag and hold again, and that'll give us another curve that we can work with. And basically what you're trying to do is just get the midpoint um, of most of these these lines. You want to get it as close as possible so that, you know, we have a nice arc that's all cleaned up. An original sketch, and this is what we're drawing. So it's a little bit time consuming, but, you know, it actually doesn't take too long once you're once you're into it. So I already did the outline of this, so I'm going to actually close this out and I'm gonna bring up the one that I already did so so this is the outline that I ended up with we'll notice that it's nice and cleaned up we have some nice nice curves there So the next thing that we want to do, we need all of our reference points for our holes. So we're going to project those onto the sketch. So remember, we're in edit mode for our most recent sketch that we're doing, sketch four there. Uh, we're going to hit project include again, and we're going to come in here, and we want the center points of all those holes. Okay, so I took a minute there and I measured the new pickups that are going to go in this uh, pick guard for this guitar. And we have to figure out how we're going to center up these new holes. And I'll show you how I did this and how it's all going to work out. So, remember that when we did this, these are just placeholders for these, these pickups. These cutouts here don't really matter. They're just sort of a rough, uh, a rough drawing so we see where we sort of end up. 
The thing to pay attention to are these holes here because we know that the stylus would self-center inside these holes. So we know that those dimensions are accurate. So what we can do um, is we take our sketch that we had from our DXF file. And if you just draw a vertical line, a construction line, between the centers of each of those mounting holes, that's going to give you a center line uh, for where each of the pickups is going to go because that's going to stay the same regardless of the size of the pickup. So once we have those lines, we can finish that sketch. We can come over to our sketch that we're working on and we can project that line from the other sketch. I might as well do both of these while I'm here and click OK. So that gives us our line and then we can go up and we can do a rectangle from the center and as we walk up on our line here it'll automatically select the center. So then we just put in the dimensions for the cutout that we need for our pickup and that's going to be 28.5 by 68.5. Hit enter and we are centered up over where we need our pickup to be and we'll do the same thing again here. So then we know that these are centered along this portion of the guitar right where they need to be. So then from there, we have to locate our mounting holes for the new pickups. So there's two different ways that you could do this. You could either project this point and offset it, uh, the amount that it needs to be offset, or we, would, we could go from the center of the pickup, since we have this line here anyway, and we could go out here a specified dimension and put our hole uh, where it needs to be, which I think is the better option because we want we want our holes, our mounting holes, to be centered to um, this feature. Okay, so for the purposes of this, what we're going to do is we're actually going to draw a circle uh, somewhere here in the center of all this. And I'll just do two millimeters for now as an example. I need to actually measure and see what the diameter of the mounting screws are. Um, but we'll do two millimeters. Uh, and I know that the mounting distance for those holes is going to be 74.975 millimeters. So if we get our calculator out here, um, 74.975 divided by two equals 37.4875. So what we would then want to do is uh, hit D for dimension and click our center point and click that point and come out here and put in 37.4875. We're pretty close. And boom, that should be perfectly aligned. So then from there, we could do the same thing on the other side, or we can draw another circle. Uh, two millimeter. And we could actually dimension that one from the center of that one so that we could maintain uh, 74.9 seven five and there we go our holes are perfectly dimensioned in relation to the pickup
if you need to cut a slot along uh, a single profile, uh, I went in and I actually drew a line because uh, upon thinking about it more, this was just an easier way to program it. Uh, you can see I've just got my two millimeter flat mill. I, I want that, that to be two millimeters wide. Um, and I select that chain or that, that line as my contour. Uh, I set how deep I want it to go here in the bottom height offset because this line is at the top of this model. And then in this tab here for passes, uh, in order to get it to cut on the center line of that, um, turn compensation type to off, because uh, otherwise it'll want to offset it to the left or right of, of this line. So by turning it off, um, it will just cut down the center. And uh, you want to make sure you turn off your lead in and lead out and set an entry position at one of these ends. And then uh, from there, you just hit OK and it should generate uh, a slot to cut. Uh, okay, uh, so from there, we go and do the contours for our cutouts for our volume and treble pots and our pickups. And then we switch over to a six millimeter V end mill, uh, V bit, and we're gonna carve out our outline with our chamfer on it. We just have to take it over to the CNC router now and get our piece tacked down, make sure everything's all leveled up, and we'll get to cutting this.